Right, let's bring in the head baseball coach, Trent Pratt. Team opens practice here in a couple of weeks, maybe actually sooner than that. We'll ask him as the first season of the Big 12 is uh, just around the corner. Our pleasure to welcome back to the Wise Guys, the head coach of the BYU baseball program, Trent Pratt. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming. Me. We're going to let DJ go and hit that button that's actually going to put you on our live stream. Yeah, and we so get, everyone can see we, that you're actually we had here. Trent, Trent there came he via, we, we could only get him via video last time because he was in, a, in between a couple of things, but he was gracious Do you to remember, come on. I think we the time before, you were in Hawaii. I was yeah, here. Yeah, and we did it. Like, I did it live from Hawaii. <laughs> you did. And we did it together, but now we got you in studio, which is great. Did you remember Tavanari? That guy could shoot. Could shoot. I remember watching him play, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, so, and it wasn't a shot he didn't take. He liked them all. <laughs> <laughs> and like Jimmer, he had the green light. Dave Rose yeah. gave him the green light. That Louisville game, it's like, when when did you feel like you were going to have a good game? He goes, I got off the bus and I was open. So <laughs> Now the Big 12, Big 12 Basketball League has been talked about so much as the toughest basketball league in America, and we believe that. And we also know now what football's like and what soccer's going to be like, and we know what women's volleyball's going to be like. Um, what about baseball? It's right up there with them. Yeah. Um, besides the SEC, the Big 12 is probably right up in the top two or three in the country. So, man, we've got a big mountain to climb. Is it's, it exciting? It's exciting. We had a talk today, first, first day back in class, and we say, hey, it's going to be a challenge, but, man, we're, we're happy it's us. We're happy it's, it's our team and our guys that get to take this challenge on and, and get to work. So it's, ex- it's exciting. It's daunting, right? Um, all, all at the same time, have you noticed an, an uptick in players – that you have access to that you get to talk to in the recruiting process as a result of them knowing you're going to be in the Big 12? Yeah, I think we've all seen that a little bit. I think um, kids, maybe we called in the past, that maybe aren't members of our faith that didn't return our college, didn't have interest. Yeah, We've had those kids on campus. Um, got one of them, lost a couple to some other big schools, but we're in the mix with those kids now. So definitely being in the Big 12 has helped with that. That's great. The uh, road games at West Virginia, Texas Tech, Texas, Oklahoma State, and Kansas State, and the home games, Houston, Kansas, Baylor, Oklahoma, and Cincinnati, uh, not scheduled to play UCF. Um, You know, we've spent so many years looking over the WCC schedule, (laughs) Uh, and now we we just look at this one, and we've gone to another planet, haven't we? It's a lot. Yeah, it's different, for (laughs) sure. And your league, WCC, had some good baseball. Yes, it did. And and there were years where, where some of the best teams in the country, including BYU, were in them. Yeah, but this league from top to bottom is is a different animal. Yeah, there's not many weekends off, and that and that's kind of the key. Is I think every sport we're seeing that that every weekend is going to be a grind. It's going to be tough. So what's the format for this? You know, we talk about you go on the road. When you go on the road, you just don't go play West Virginia once. You guys you play a series with them, mm-hmm. right? How's that? How does that work? So fans understand how that's going to work. Yeah, we fight on Wednesday and we play a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. Yeah. Um, try to get home Saturday night. So yeah, we were on the road. We missed a lot of class on the yeah. road, but. We get to know other guys really good, too. Um, we spend a lot of time together through travel, and so it's a good experience. But, yeah, baseball, it's a three-game series. And you take, you take tutors on the road with you because the guys, even though that's a difficult schedule, and as a conference like the Big 12 that's spread out, they still have to keep up on their, on their studies, right? Yeah, and we do the best we can with that. Um, this fall, our team, we, Grace came out, we had a 3-3-5 GPA as a team, good. so that's oh, one man. of the highest we've had in a while. Yeah, so. that's great. Now the challenge is, hey, let's not go to a 2-5 during the season. Let's try to keep it a 3 Now, skiers uh, look at the 10-day forecast, and they love it because yeah. it's going to snow. You look at the 10-day forecast, and you're about to start practice. And you can practice outside because your field's got a heater in it where the snow will melt. But cold is cold. And so how does the, the January forecast of these next two weeks affect how you start? Well, this week's awful. I mean, we have a heater, but when it's supposed to snow every day, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it can't, it can't keep, keep up, up it. right? And it's cold, so... Like we have the IPF and we have, you know, good facilities we can work out in. So we'll get our work in. Um, just we'd like to be outside if we can. And if it's 30 and sunny, we'll go out. But this week doesn't look too good. No, yeah. When, no when's the first, when's, let's see, when's the first home game scheduled? We've got that. It's like that first, end of February, 1st of March. Got so it's, home. so yeah. it's, February it's like, where's all this snow been the last two months, right? And now all of a sudden we're, we're feeling like, okay, it's, we're getting into the beginning of the year. It should start to – no, now we're going to get yeah, it. Yeah, I think my 7-year-old, what, January 3rd, practiced outside. He was in shorts and a T-shirt yeah. you know, outside yeah. of Spanish Fort. We were so golfing yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah, we need that weather yeah. now. Now, last year, of course, we had record snow. So well, let's hope for moderate yeah. snow because yeah. we yeah. want to get some home games in. Let's yeah. talk about some of the guys. Uh, and, and you got some pitchers coming back. And I know uh, when Bryce Robinson, even though he, he participated in senior day last year, uh, as we see so many football players do, and then they go, hey, wait a sec, I still have another year to get ready 
to go get a job. But seven and three, kid out of Las Vegas, leads your pitching staff. Yeah, he's been one of our best guys for the last two or three years. Yeah. And we're lucky to have him back. Um, pitching, we struggled last year, had some injuries and couldn't quite overcome them. But this year with Bryce coming back, um, having Mason Olsen back, um, Boston Mabius back, and then bringing in some new guys, we feel like we're a lot deeper on the mound, have a chance to do a lot more. And that, about, that was one of our struggles last year was, you know, yeah. you know, on the mound. And we feel like this group has a chance to be a lot better. Yeah, what does Brett Hansen bring to you, transfer out of Vanderbilt? You'd mentioned the SEC mm -hmm. is one of the top baseball conferences in the country. He was a Max Preps High School All-America, not a Pleasanton, mm -hmm. California. What does he bring to this staff? Yeah, he's, he's an experienced guy, left-handed. Um, hasn't had a chance to pitch a lot in college, but he's an older guy with some maturity. And him and his brother Ben was there last year and, and – you know, had a maybe a little rough year, but being back off a mission, that's you kind of know what to get with pitchers as they come back. Ben so had, this year we, we expect him to step up and be a lot better. Ben had more bad luck than anyone <laughs> yeah. last year. He went 0-5, he had 10 starts, but he was your Saturday guy. And, and, and it seemed like, and I think I called a lot of those games where they were, it was a, a lead that got away late or whatever. It just couldn't get over the hump, but he had some great. He had some good starts for us, definitely. Starts, and we yeah. just got to find a way to finish those games out and, you know, we, had, we had moved Mason Olsen in the rotation last year. Yeah. We were planning him the season to be towards the end of the game. And so now it allows Mason to be. We have some guys at the end of the game that, you know, have a chance to a little better finish the game for us. And hopefully you knock on wood some better health this year. So yes, that you're deep, in, deep enough to, to have a deep, a deep bullpen and do is, all that. Is yeah. Mabius the closer? He'll be in the end of the game somewhere, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good. He, he, I mean, he was, he was lights out for us. And we got him a lead at the end of the game yeah. towards the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah, he did really good for us. Count on a win when we had a lead late with him. All right, let's talk about some fielders. And I know Brock Watkins, who uh, was hurt all last year, except yeah. for those first few games. And I think I asked you probably 20 times, is Watkins <laughs> playing today? And you say, uh, we'll see how he warms up. We'll see how he warms yeah. up. Well, he's back, and he's had an off season. How valuable is he in your middle infield? It's real valuable to have a guy with experience. Yeah. Um, we also brought in Crew Robinson, a transfer from UC San Diego that you know played a lot there. He's a second baseman. And so, I mean, we lost some guys offensively last year. Mm -hmm. We lose Austin Deming. We lose Cole Gamble. Um, but return Cooper Vest, Luke Anderson, um, Easton Jones. So there's a lot of new faces. But like every team, it's someone's going to step up. You know, Deming didn't have the year he had last year the years before. Right. But he stepped up and had a huge year for us. And so I'm excited to see who that person is going to be this year. There were times when he was hitting softballs up there. Yeah, he was unconscious. And he put those across the street to the Marriott I'm sure Center. Like, like John, JT was talking about, there's some out-of-body experience with him, too, <laughs> yeah. as the ball was floating in there. Yeah, yeah. You guys have done really well with, with local – like Cooper, you mentioned Cooper Vest, the St. George kid, Easton Jones is a Lehigh kid. Um, how big is your emphasis on getting the top players in the state of Utah? We always want the best players in our state. We want to win, you yeah. know, those battles at home and then mix those in with kids, you know, from all over. Um, but, no, we, baseball in Utah has gotten a lot better the last little while, and we definitely, you know, want to keep those kids at home. Trent Pratt, head baseball coach at BYU's on the Wise Guys tonight, live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and wiseguys.com. I thought uh, Luke Anderson uh, was fun to watch, and we kind of went through the roller coaster of a freshman season with him where yeah. there were days of brilliance, and then there were days of being a freshman. Uh, what, what are your expectations for him? And then let's also go back to Cooper, who I thought – um, might have been your best player all around those last uh, last last month of the season. Yeah, we're expecting like a lot of those two guys to kind of lead us. Um, Luke's man, he's an awesome kid. He's infectious. Kids love being around yeah. him. If people know Luke played, I think the last three or four weekends with a broken wrist. Right. Um, oh man, he got hit at UC San Diego, and he's like, "There's no way you're taking me out of the lineup. <laughs> like, there's no chance." And just the type of kid he is, and what a good teammate he is, and and Cooper the same way. Tough, gritty kid, and both those guys can help lead our young guys and some ex inexperienced guys. Hey, here's how it's done. And we need those guys to have good years for us, for us to be successful. You, you mentioned some newcomers on the pitching staff that will give you some depth and help with that. Uh, what, what newcomers do you have joining this year that, that you feel like, oh, this guy's going to contribute right away? Oh, we have Stone Cushing, a Salem kid that was at CSI, Maddox Peck from Bingham High School. Um, Is he related to Coach Peck that coached uh, football up there for so many years? I believe so. It has wow. to be, right? Legendary. If you're, yeah, if you're packing, you're at Bingham. There's a legendary <laughs> football coach up there. Um, Case and Bill from St. George, another freshman. Max Stanley, uh, Brett Hansen. So it's like there's a lot of – we have a lot of good arms, young arms. That, they're just inexperienced. Mm. Haven't really maybe pitched this level a lot. And so it's just how quickly can we get them acclimated and get them in a game. Um, Carter Foss that you know, hasn't had a great career here but has been lights out and really good this fall. 
And so we're expecting a lot of those guys. And hopefully that allows us to, hey, some of us in trouble. We can get someone else in. Where last year we felt like we had to ride those starters a little longer than we would have liked to. Mm -hmm. Where the previous year, the starter got to the fifth, we had – Nate Daly, Reed McLaughlin, yeah. Cy Nielsen. We had some dudes, yeah. yeah. Hey, we, got, we got lead in the fifth or sixth. Hey, ball game. Those three guys are going to finish it for us. And that hurt losing Reed last year, and I haven't, you know, his coming present at the end of the game. So we look at this staff, and it's, it's as deep as we've had. It's just, it's inexperience. So it's, hey, how quickly can we get them up to speed, you know, to, to new, a new speed of the game? Catcher, I think you went through three last year. Yeah. Um, Colin Reuter got hurt. Uh, and was out for most, right? Yeah, the whole season. And now he's back. Mm -hmm. uh, is is he the the lead guy down there? Or you still got a committee. We're hopes we're hoping the whole column be healthy. He his arms healing up. Um, I hopefully you know that Colin can do it. He was really good for us as a freshman. Yeah. And if not, we have Parker Goff that right. came in and did a really good job for us uh, towards the middle end of the season. And we have Bryant Ball and a young freshman Gavin Taylor. That man, we think we, there's enough depth there. Um, we'd love Colin to be healthy. We saw what he did as a freshman. He's a big power bat and can really catch and throw but if not there's we know there's guys that can get back there and, and handle our pitching staff for us if i remember right uh didn't parker hit a home run his first at bat i believe so yeah Crushed and home. i remember talking <laughs> to his parents walking out after one of those games and and uh, i think if uh, correct me if i'm wrong but his family has had been mostly utah a utah ute family yeah. uh uh and and he kind of surprised them by picking byu and they were adjusting to blue shirts and yeah and all that stuff but they were all in uh and what a moment uh, for him. Yeah, his, his dad, Mikey, on. and my brother Scott were actually teammates at Utah for a year. Is that right? Oh, wow. so, yeah, so we've you know, <laughs> known Mikey for a while. That's cool. We, we talked about this, this league and the challenges. What's the formula for winning in this league? Like, we're, as you look at what you're building, where do you think, man, we've just got to get better at, at, in this area, we've got to be better at that to compete for championships in this league? Obviously, we've got to get better on the mound and play better defense. You look at last year, we didn't pitch it great, and defensively, we didn't do a great job. A lot of that was injuries and guys not being healthy, but everyone has those. But that's that's been the big emphasis this fall is, hey, we got to pitch and play defense. Mm -hmm. If you can't pitch, you're not going to win. Right. You cannot score everyone every night. Yeah. Um, there's there's going to be nights where, hey, we might have to outscore some people. But if you, if you don't let the other team score, you got you got a really good yeah, chance. Yeah, you got a great you got a great shot. <laughs> You've right? played uh, these Big Twelve teams before. Mm -hmm. You played Texas mm -hmm. and you played Oklahoma State. Is pitching. The thing in the Big 12 is pitching depth. What What is the biggest difference maker? I think it's just depth all around. I think you see in football and basketball, it's just the depth of their mm. lineup one through nine, mm. the amount of like their depth on the mound, their first, you know, eight to 10 guys. And it's us just, you know, gradually building that depth. Um, but like anything, we, we're not expected going in and like, any game we play, we're expecting to win. Right. We're going to win every game. Sure. Right. And we're going to battle and, and like crazy. And we expect to go in and win games and, and compete like crazy. Is there a program in the league this year that we all should watch? Where you're, where you're just going, man, they're loaded coming mm -hmm. back. The, you know, the clear expected winner of this league, or is there a couple of teams? Probably TCU and, and Texas this year. Yeah. Um, reading, you know, TCU was in the World Series last year. Yeah. Return a lot of players. Um, Texas has been, you know, right there the right last there. three or four yeah, years. They're always there. Um, Kansas State has one of the best things they've had in a while. And so there's, there's not many letdowns in this league. West Virginia has one of the best hitters in the country. Went to a regional last year, so it's we, gonna be awesome. And then we pick up Miami on a bye week. And so yeah, there you go. It's like it, it we didn't do ourselves many favors right there. <laughs> That's as random as the scheduling things I've seen. I was reading through the schedule and I'm like all of a sudden the hurricanes show up in Miami. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in May. Uh, those for a couple those of days. bye weeks are tough. You you look and you know, you're looking for people that need games and it, it, the schedule came out late, so just trying to pick up game and someone we lost a series with somebody when our schedule changed. They lost a series, and it's like, hey, we're open. You're open. Why couldn't you Let's go to Miami, Miami to like in February? Yeah, exactly. That would have been awesome. We're going to Arizona, so not quite Miami, but close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trent Pratt's with us on the Wise Guys. Uh, two new additions, uh, Adam Law from the Dodgers, a former Coug, and Tyler Kulbaugh from Arizona. Join your staff and, and give you a whole different look. What do you like of these two guys? Man, I love how they interact with our players. Um, they're there all the time. They work. They're super energetic. Um, it's, it's what our kids need. You know, coaching Adam our first year here, we had a good relationship when he played here yeah. and he kept in contact since he left. Um, he's working as a mental strength guy with the Dodgers, also with their infielders. So he brings a world, mm. you know, of, of knowledge on the mental side, which we know is a big deal. And he has the ability to connect with our players really well. And Tyler's been around baseball his entire life. Um, dad's a big leaguer, coaches in the big leagues now. And so we just have some guys with baseball that give our players more avenues, more people to go to and, and teach. And so 
that's been a great job because we need to be a good job developing players. We're not going to go get the biggest five stars. We'll get some of them. We're not going to get all of them like some of their schools get. Right. So our bread and butter has got to be, we got to get guys and develop and get them better. How important is this? Because we see each team now um, as there's more resources, um, add like a coach that can help with mental health and resilience and, and with, uh, with uh, positive attitude and um, all, all of those kinds of things. How big a part of the game is that? And these teams in the Big 12 that you're going to be competing with, have they had this element for a long time? Or is this relatively new to baseball, period, and to all these other sports? No, it's, been around for, it's been around baseball for a while. Um, Coach Alvarez, there's a guy named Ken Reviz that's kind of like, you know, the godfather of this. And mm -hmm. when he pitched at Long Beach State, Ken Reviz was on their staff. And so some teams have had it. I think most of the teams in the Big 12 probably have someone. We're like we have Dr. Manning that works with us. Right. But also it helps to have Adam with on a daily basis, right. like at bat to at bat, pitch to pitch, that um, baseball is a quick game and it's a game of a failure. Um, you're going to fail a lot more and succeed in that game. And so being able to look, you know, control your control and, and understand outcomes. And we have to talk about it a lot. Um, and the more we talk about it, the gradual, we'll gradually get better at it as well. We used to tell our little leaguers uh, down in Vegas, when we're going up against somebody three times their size who's throwing smoke, we just say, we say, guys. Guy looks like he's nine feet tall on the, the mound. Harder, the harder he throws, the further it goes. Just and we just form. try to get him to believe that. <laughs> just move it forward a little bit. Because they're just ter terrified to go in there. But you had to get him in there, right? It's, yeah. You have to uh, go to the psyche and, and, uh, and get him into the box. The season opener is in the MLB Desert Invitational. February 16th, you get USC at Sloan Park, which is home of the Cubs. Your socks, the Cubs. Yeah. yeah, we got the Cubs <laughs> socks on. Uh, and that's, then, his, that's his team. Then like, you're going to play dies with him. Ohio Mostly State dies. on February 17th, and then on a Monday, February 19th, Grand Canyon. Those are three good games. Really right good programs. Gate. Three really good teams. Um, I'm good friends with all those head coaches, so it should be fun and, and a good challenge that – yeah, all great coaches and have good teams this year, so it should be exciting. And that, that home opener, uh, we were mentioning the end of February, 29th through March 2nd, with, with Gonzaga coming mm -hmm. in for a series. So that's a team you're really familiar with uh, to open at home with. Yeah, we've got to know their staff really well. Yeah. Um, we compliment each other well, and Coach Maktoff and his staff, it's been great playing them. And at the end of the year, like, hey, we want to keep this going as much as we can. We love coming here. We love playing you guys. Um, we love the battles we have. Let's find a way to keep it going. So we were happy that Somehow that opened up. We'll see if we get it in. It's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cold, but yeah. We'll the hope. heaters on that hopefully, day. One of, hopefully, one of those good winter days <laughs> um, that we get every once in a while. Did they put the same field in? The, they said they were going to go put the same field in the after playing one. on I, yours. I don't know if they put the heater in. I, I talked to Coach Maktoff through the process. I can't remember if they said they're doing the heater or not. That's one thing I, I, I wasn't they were, sure of. They were jealous of that. And then will will we go up to Gonzaga next, the next year? Next year, yep. Okay. Just do a whole hey, And Dave them. and I are volunteering to go call that series in Miami. <laughs> Even if it's in May and it might be a little warm, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we're volunteering we'll to go, go call down that there. for sure. Yeah, you have to fight Greg for that one. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Believe. All BYU home games and every uh, Big 12 game be televised on ESPN+. Plus. And then every BYU game will also be on BYU Radio. The fundraiser, the first pitch dinner is coming up Thursday, January 18th at the Provo Marriott. Keynote speaker is Justin Sua, former BYU pitcher. Tell us about him and, and, uh, and why folks need to get tickets and get down there. Man, you need to come listen to Justin talk. Um, was a great player here. He's worked on the, in the mental performance side. He's been full-time with the Devil Rays. Um, I think he just kind of left them as kind of his own, but he's worked at Cleveland Browns. Um, I know he's written two books as far as like for young wow. kids on working on the mental game and we're excited to have him. I've got to know him a little bit this fall, just talking to him and man, what a great human being and a great person and um, a good advocate for our program. And he, he has a lot to talk about and a lot of knowledge with stories in his, his journey through the professional ranks. I think he worked at Cleveland Browns as well at one time. Oh yeah. I'm probably doing him some injustice. I don't have his profile <laughs> no, in front of me. That's all right. When you read yeah, it, he, sounds, he sounds really good, right? Just with what you're saying. No, but I mean, his dad played here. Um, he's a legacy, you know, BYU player. And so it'll be great to have Justin back in Provo. And this is a phenomenal dinner. I've been to it many times. There's, there's the speaker, but there, there's the awards that, that uh, are presented to your players. I, I believe there's still a silent auction with some of the greatest memorabilia ever. Yeah, assembled. silent auction. And then, you know, Brian Santago will come up and do a live auction. And if you yeah, haven't seen Brian, you know, you haven't seen Brian in action, he can, he's something might be special, I'm sure. Just to so. come see him. It's, and it's fun that Justin Sua comes back in as a speaker, a former, former player. How engaged um, do the former players stay? Like, we've had Wally on the show. Um, mm. Wally Jones yeah, was on awesome. a few weeks ago. It, did, it was so fun to reminisce with Wally about his time here and then his time. Um, in Major League Baseball, when Wally World was at its uh, 
at his peak. We've had our favorite with, Cubs pitcher yeah. on as well over the last season. I'm losing, uh, I'm losing my mind. Season. Yeah. Uh, Michael Rucker. Michael Rucker, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, Michael shared with us the experience of uh, – one of his first uh, efforts coming out of the bullpen was uh, against Aaron Judge in Yankee Stadium. He told us this whole. <laughs> he says the last thing the last thing the pitching coach said to him is like, "Whatever you do, don't get it up high in the strike zone, and he'll mash this thing out of here because bases were loaded." Yeah. And he says he's walking to the mound. He's saying to himself, "Like the great Vecini, he's like the great Vecini in his head. He's like." Well, he's going to think for sure that I've got the scouting report. That there's no way I'll throw a high fastball. So what I think I should do is I should throw a high fastball, <laughs> and which he did, and he blew it by him, um, and he actually struck Aaron Judge out. So, yeah. so anyhow, it was, it's it's been fun to have those guys. I've been telling Dave we're going to go get get my boy uh, Corey Snyder to come on and be with us, good friend. Yeah. Um, how much a part of the program do the alumni stay? And and. Would you like to have more of them? And, and what, what are you doing to get those guys engaged? We want them all back. Um, there's, there's a lot that are involved, and we talk to quite a bit. But, yeah, we want them all back. Um, we have this place because of them. Yeah. Um, they're the guys that were for us. And there's a great BYU history I don't think a lot of people know about. And we want those guys back and share it with our players and talk to them and, and have them around. Um, we welcome them back. If you have my number, if you don't have it, you're my email, call me. Like, we want you guys back in the program and, and involved. Um, it was awesome. Before our dinner last year, we had good weather. And Rucker actually came back. He was at the dinner, and yeah. he got on the mound, and he faced some of our guys. And oh, that's awesome. Anybody Juice hit him? Is, yeah, we hit him pretty good. And he, <laughs> and he, got, he got mad. And <laughs> like it, but it was a lot of fun just having yeah. him back and seeing him compete. And, man, it was great having Rucker with us. That's a guy that, you know, if you got a lead as a starter, if we got Rucker one run lead, it was like, okay, the game's over. Oh, the game's yeah. over. Because you could see it in his eyes. He was going to finish it. Right, he went 16-1, and one, right? It's, yeah. Senior year, or it was last year. Last year, it was yeah, where it was, he had one loss, but yeah. no, it was, you knew if you got, and we had a lot of good, he went up against Corbin Burns, he mm -hmm. went up against Mitchell White, um, there was a three or four big leaguers that the West Coast Conference had on the yeah. Friday night guys that year, and, he was and, great. and Ruck beat them all. That's awesome. I love that, uh, the one thing I love about Michael Rucker is he loved his time here. His oh, whole yeah. life changed here. We, we love having yeah. him on because he talks about what, what BYU did for him as an individual and how much he enjoyed his time here. And it's yeah. really fun to talk to him. He about did a lot that. for us too, that's for sure. So yeah. let me ask you about a Bryce Harper question. Yeah. Uh, so I knew Bryce from Vegas, where he's a UNLV fan and a college of Southern Nevada ball player. But uh, but he was he visited with your team last summer, I believe. It was or that it was summer or the year couple, before. A couple of fall or springs ago. He so was then in all town. of a sudden like, hey, yeah. there's Bryce Harper talking to the Cougs. So so maybe he likes the Cougs a little more than <laughs> I than hope so. We'll take off. him back, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he had a great – it was awesome to see him talk to our team. He yeah. had Bryson stop with him. They came to get – they were in town and got a lift in and, and stopped in. And it was awesome to hear him talk to our team and for our kids to see something like that. And, and the words he shared with them was like, just, hey, love your teammates. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Um, play hard, but, man, love each other, help each other out, um, become tight. And it was cool to hear that message from him – being a big leaguer, that's what they try to focus on there. And, and he's lived it. You know, yeah. he's, he's even told the Phillies that he, he wants to be a forever Philly. And he's making a fortune, but he's also not going, uh, hey, I'm going to have another good game and I'm out. He's yeah. all in on Philadelphia. Yeah, and I'm going to leverage my success to make another however many million someplace <laughs> else. He just hasn't done that, right? So one yeah. question we've asked all the coaches uh, who have marched into their Big 12 mm -hmm. seasons, uh, do, do your players have an idea – of the challenge ahead. I mean, you see the names and this, but you you know uh, what you're going into. Mark Pope knows what he's going into. Amber Whiting knows what she's going into. Kalani had a pretty good idea. Um, it's big time, but the reason it's big time is because it's tough. Yeah. And uh, these big wins are going to be massive wins, uh, and there will be some defeats in there too, but this is where you this is where you want them to be. Yeah, we had that talk today is, hey, guys, we're in a good situation because – they're not going to expect a lot out of us, which is good. And we need to take that with a chip on our shoulder and play a little angry mm -hmm. and, and go out there with a the presence and do and fight and claw and do whatever we can to beat somebody. So that's what we're trying to tell them is, yeah, we know what it's like, but I don't think even I know what it's like as a coach to, to coach against it week in and week out. As a player, I remember I played at Auburn, played in the SEC, right. and you knew there was – There's no, no rest in the matter where SEC you went ever. on the road, like, man, that team might only have two wins, but you might get swept. Um, yeah, and so, before that, you're in the Pac-12, yeah. so it's never been easy. So it's been a gauntlet, but it, it's different on this side of it, that's for sure. Yeah. But just preparing our guys to know, like, hey, we have an awesome opportunity to go do something here. And we're just we're thankful it's us. We're glad that we're in this situation. We actually have a chance to do it. And so that's our message, but we need to, 
we need to dig deep and find out what's going to what's going to separate us and come with an identity real quick and be able to you know last that throughout the season i'm telling you there's there's Few better places to be than Miller Park oh, on a Friday I, night. On a beautiful on a beautiful summer day, is there is there a better setting in college baseball than I don't what you have so. right there, where you sit as a fan, where you sit and just gaze at Y Mountain and the and the mountains and and Temp and all of that Cascade. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a stadium in a better setting. I don't think so either. People that there's a lot of pictures on social media, but that doesn't do it justice until you sit and see it live. And those, those mountains are pretty majestic to sit up there and see. I think sometimes we take it for granted. But to every once in a while sit back and look at it, it's like, geez, Louise, we're pretty blessed to be here. Yeah. yeah every like, single coach that I've done a pregame visit with all these years just stares at the mountains. And, you know, even Pepperdine, who stares into the Pacific yeah. Ocean, he's like, <laughs> like this, this is, is different. This is this awesome. Is special. Yeah. We were doing a basketball <laughs> game a few weeks ago, uh, Trenton. Um, it, was it Bellarmine or no? Who was it? It was... Some people from back east, and I don't know. We we're Could doing so many them. of them, but but anyhow, we were coming out of practice. We went to their shoot around. They came out and they said, "Hey, could you just come over and take a picture?" They had the whole team together, and they wanted a picture with Mount Timpanogos in the background. And uh, and coach, oh, it was, it was Georgia State. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah, coach I'm says, sorry. "None of these kids have ever been out in the mountains before." <laughs> and he says, "This is so cool for our." So he says, we're, ha we're having a hard time focusing because everybody just keeps wanting to come out looking at the mountains, which is <laughs> which is really fun. And you'll get a little of that Big 12 teams coming in here, and they're not going to be used to that setting. The ball carries big time. My, my days here were spent watching Wally and Corey and these guys. Uh, I watched Corey hit one uh, onto the top of the steps at the Mary Center, and Wally yeah. hit one on top of May Hall over in Heelman Hall. That doesn't surprise me with those yeah. two guys. <laughs> That's the reason they played as long as they did. Yeah. Tickets to the first pitch dinner are still available through this Friday, January 12th, at sportscamps at byu.edu. Uh, the event's Thursday, January 18th at the Provo Marriott with uh, Justin Sue, a former BYU pitcher, uh, back to tell his story and help raise some money for the baseball program. So follow the Cougs, get involved, and there's an opportunity for you to uh, to donate, participate. You get a, a, a player gets assigned to sit at each table, I think. We kind of help them. Or something they're, like they're, that. They're around the waiters. Help people, or the, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people to their seats. You get to hang out with the guys. Hopefully you get a chance to talk to some of our players and get to know them a little bit. I'm reminded when you were named head coach, we were talking to you about your son, your youngest, mm -hmm. who uh, and his reaction. Um, and um, how old is he now? He's seven now. He's seven now. How, how has he taken news of the Big 12, and he's seen the schedule, and what are his thoughts? Well, he knows a lot. If you ask him any basketball question right now, he's going to tell you who's ranked, who's not. Yeah. He knows they come does, out. Does the he think Travanel should have stayed in the game longer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, he, didn't, he was six, so he didn't get to come to the game with me, but my wife texts me and goes, he had to turn the game off. He got frustrated towards <laughs> the end. We're not going to win. Um, so he's, he's kind of a front runner that way. That's awesome. But, no, he's excited. He's already asked how many trips he can go on. Him mm. and my nine-year-old son is like, well, can we go to Oklahoma State? Can we go here? I'm like, I don't, we'll find out. Just just hold on for a minute. But, no, they're excited. Um, good. It's good to have him around. And run, you've seen him run, run, run around oh, the yeah. park. It's mm -hmm. Man, it's, it's fun to have them. Occasionally, I'll get some insight from them in your office before the game yeah. as they come through. They're, they're full of – what I love that they love it, <coughs> and they love that their dad's a head coach. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you guys. Head baseball coach Trent Pratt. Uh, again, that uh, first pitch banquet's coming up January 18th. Practice, when's your first official day? We're like in, it, like what, limited hours. Yeah. Um, first official day is, I think, January 26th. And individual workouts, they can go on right now? Yeah, we just okay. had meetings today, so we'll, we'll yeah, start Yeah, I mean, you tomorrow. can be with them right now. Yeah. It's just a limited hours yeah, thing, right? We're like we eight hours a week with them. And, okay, and, cool. and you're you're pretty much in this. You're in, in the indoor practice facility, yep. hitting with the nets and all that. We're right? just trying to get that get that schedule, how we're going to make it work. That's right. The next, it's crazy. This, at least this week. Too much intramurals in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, and it's next month. Next month, baseball starts. It's exciting uh, times. February 16th against USC at Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. That's where we'll be. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll be. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for coming Thank on. You guys. This Looking forward to the season. BYU Thank baseball. On the coldest day of the year, we're talking BYU baseball. That's right. Just and we, did, we, held off, we held off the snow for Trent <laughs> so that he could get up to our undisclosed location in Provo. But we did disclose that it's on a hill. So it's not good when it snows, but but it's okay tonight. It's, it's holding off till tomorrow, okay so Trent tonight. can get it in and out of here safely. Appreciate so. it. Thanks, Coach. It.